Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today, Mac Jones balling out. My goodness, putting the hurt to the Cleveland Browns. Lots of fun. Fired up to break this one down. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Mac Jones is balling out. Love to see it right here, naked. Going to the bottom of the screen. Big out to the sideline. Watch the corner down here. Just absolutely do him dirty. My goodness. Talk about a lot of things here, but love what the Patriots are doing play calling wise. A bunch of different layers right here. Moving the pocket, changing the landmark. Watch 16. Secure the edge on the right side. Boom. Get off me. Nobody in the flat. No problems when you got that kind of winner on the perimeter. If that comeback wasn't there, you see the overcoming with him. But things to pay attention to that I love that really the Patriots do a better job than probably anybody over the course of the last two decades, in my opinion, is what I'm used to calling run at technique. So many teams, if you run an out, it will be this or it will be a comeback will be up and out. They do a great job. And I know there are other programs, other organizations, don't freak out, but run at the technique of the corner. So if this corner is widening, this comeback will come at him. And so really that looks like a few different things. It looks like you're kind of going to run like a spray eight or spray post or whatever. That's really what gets this top action at the top here with the corner. But just the angle of it really distorts a lot of technique in my opinion. Those guys are used to pedaling backwards or shuffling in a straight line. So when you go at their technique like this, it's just a different layer. And I'm not sure I'd want to live in that world, but I feel like they've always lived in that world and they're, in my opinion, the best at it. Great job by Mac Jones here, throwing on the run. Again, really love what McDaniels is doing. Screen game, changing the landmark, run game, motion, short motion, lots of great stuff. Obviously, Mac Jones playing at an extremely high level. Fun to see all those pieces come together to just put an absolute whooping on Cleveland. Empty, bottom of the screen. Get a little corner, beautiful touch, wide open. Again, outstanding design. Love these types of plays where everything is going right to left or left to right. You can see the command at the line of scrimmage with the protection, knows exactly where he's at. They do a nice job getting to empty all game here, especially in the tight red. No pressure, no problem. That's just too damn easy. So what's going on? How do we get there? What is the concept? Because this is really where... I feel like offensive coordinators can separate themselves as far as pure design down here in the tight red. So what's going on? We get to empty. Right here, this is kind of the start of the play. What are they doing with these two eligibles down here? So it looks like they're trying to in and out this thing or bingo it. So these two for those two. So we get what I'm used to calling a reverse whip or a reverse arrow right here. And then we're going to run a corner by the number two. Well, this landmark with this defender not good leverage for a corner, right? He's already outside of you, got issues. But because they try to banjo this thing and he's kind of flat and it looks like his eyes are almost caught to the one, he's able to get to the outside and then run away. And it's a really beautiful ball. And we talked a lot about accuracy, these corner throws down in here in the red zone. We'll talk about it when it pulls out here. But watch these two defenders down here, really the inside defender. Just a little flat footed, like he's not sure what's going to happen. And obviously, they get him dirty later in the game. But the landmark for me is what I really love. Normally, most offenses will say, hey, it's a corner route. You want to run this thing to the back pylon. I've heard people say it's a race to the back pylon, whatever. To me, that's not really accurate how it's played. So you might set the landmark there, but this ball is usually thrown halfway in the end zone on the sideline so that you're able to shave this thing, keep running, and run away from it. Just a little detail element that really puts this thing makes it so clean so easy you can see if it wasn't there you got that reverse arrow for probably a catch and score and then you've got the over and the comeback coming this way so everything is right to left one to the corner two arrow three over four second arrow or second over just the thing of beauty but absolutely elite accuracy decisiveness Getting the ball out on time. Nice pass protection. Love them getting to empty here. They're only going to bring four. 
too easy. Just super smooth, nice pass protection. You can see if it wasn't there, look at that over coming across 84. High back five, that's probably a touchdown. Second over, probably a touchdown or second in. Got touchdowns all over the place. A big third and six. We're going to work the option up top. It's not there. Then we're going to come to the over or basic down here to the bottom of the screen. Does a nice job going one, no, up in the pocket, on the body, on the break. You can see that hole, thief, rat, whatever you want to call the middle player on man coverage. Really get a chance to see Jones's eyes here go from our left, no, up in the pocket. And then when he lets that thing go for 84, you can see 22. 22 is driving that option to our left. Mac Jones up in the pocket. And when he lets this thing go, you can see it's not in the first hole, second hole, almost third hole, all the way across. Look at all those brown defenders. Whoop. Big time third down conversion. Just lots of moving parts there that Mac Jones has to execute at a really high level. Up top, they've got the little clear and the option. So how these things usually work is usually the guy who's on the ball here will be running either a seven or a go. Then the second one will kind of skip off. So it kind of slows it. And then usually this is an option. If that's not there, you want something coming into that space. And so that's where that in comes. Now it gets a little bit complicated when there is a rat thief, whatever you want to call this middle field player, depending on where they come from, the linebacker or secondary spot, but they basically have an extra guy. So you have to navigate that as well. So no, to the option, yes to the in basic right behind it. Just nice job by Mac Jones playing, winning from within the pocket. You can see that safety drop down into the hole. No to the option, yes to the in. Again, double in again. Just excellent pocket mobility for Mac Jones. Great base, keeping his eyes down the field, getting through his progression. Everything we ever heard about him on display right here. Processing. Love it. Not easy to do. You can see him almost catch himself, kind of get up, sees a little, is he going to take off? Nope. On the body, on the break. Just an absolutely outstanding third down conversion. Another one here, third and nine. This time we're going to use motion again at the bottom of the screen. And we're throwing a little fade ball down here to the bottom. One-on-one -on -one to the field. Bump. Let's take our shot. Great win at the line of scrimmage, too, at the wide receiver. Just whoop. See ya. It's a lot of space. Drop it right into the bucket. That's just a huge third down and nine conversion. Making these types of throws, these types of decisions on third down, executing at this level, pretty special. Again, showcasing a bunch of different throws, too. Touch, decisiveness, getting through your reads. Right here, great vision. Again, I love the play design, offensive architecture. You go from two by two here. The short motion allows the bump. See the adjustment to motion. Go to school on the motion. Get the matchup you want down here to the bottom of the screen. Let it go. Because if it wasn't there, where else would the ball go? You know, there's not a lot there. Maybe the flat, although I would make the argument that the back probably should be picking that blitzer up. But there's not a lot there. You don't make this throw. And that's a beautiful throw in the bucket. Nothing easy about that throw either because it's kind of a unique angle. You don't make that type of fade throw, almost like an inside fade, but with nobody else out there. Again, he's almost always lined up to his left. Does a really nice job, like the little half pedal. Look at that back foot in the ground. Lined up to his left. No wasted motion. Knows exactly what he's doing and has the accuracy to finish it. Just a thing of beauty. Really playing at an extremely high level. Fun to see. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. It lets you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I appreciate the support for the channel. Then if you want even more quarterback school content, you cannot get enough. Hop over to the quarterback school Patreon community, long form videos over there, really trying to create the environment of exactly what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. So usually take full games, Break them down, talk details, run game, pass protection, defensive tendencies, all that stuff. If you're interested in that, hop over to the Quarterback School Patreon community, support the show. And then finally, if you're looking for the absolute premium content, the things I'm most proud of here through the channel, check out the courses. Have a number of different courses. Have a free course on the quick game. 
have courses on RPOs, how to beat every coverage, pass protection, tempos, you name it. Check out the courses. The link is in the description. I appreciate it. Let's keep the video going. Next one here is a touchdown seam, bottom of the screen. I think he says no to the double move at the number one, yes to the seam. The timing of it is a little janky. I think it could really be a bit of an ambulance throw. A little friendly fire there from the Browns. But the way that the league has allowed you to kind of protect these wide receivers, they're not going to take shots down the field. You can get away with some of these throws like this. These are tough, tough hits. Five years ago, ten years ago, ambulance shots. But that's a beautiful catch. Again, the decisiveness, the accuracy to give his guy a shot. Down here at the bottom of the screen, you can see the double move, a little quick out and up. Nice job bear hugging the seam, the number two. Mac Jones just really impressed me specifically with his footwork, how he's lined up to his left. He's just ready to go. All his cleats are on the ground. I mean, again, that is Sunday open. Look at that seam down here at the bottom of the screen. The number, right, running up the numbers. And he's being grabbed, held. That's open. Throw him open. Protect him as best you possibly can. Tight windows in the red area. Just a really a thing of beauty. Again, what Mac Jones is doing. Decisive. Footwork, great play calling, design, accurate, lots of good stuff. Patriots, my goodness, got it going for sure. Third and nine. This one, probably the only one over the course of the game that I was like, man, I wish he could have a chance to have this one back. Again, they do the double mo double ins down here at the bottom of the screen. Nothing there easy, I will say, for as much as I love so much of what they do offensively, really in the screen game and allowing Mac Jones to be decisive. This was one of those plays where I wish he would have been in a five-step drop. And I think the five-step drop for me allows this to be a massive play because to me, you really only have one shot here. Big third and long, they coming up here and it's really almost like a double move and he's got all this space to throw this thing. Two ends down here at the bottom of the screen. Neither of the ends are there, but if you have enough time, this thing is gonna be a monster hit. Now, what does that mean you have to do? That means you have to be able to take five from gun or seven from under center, and you got to hitch and you got to hold on. Now, the reason I think you can get away with this, how they do pass pro here, is we get double chips, chip, chip. We've got seven person protection, and really the deficiency where we take the L right here, the nose crosses the center's face and basically beats a double team. He beats the center and the left guard. If that doesn't happen, you've got this post down the field. And I just wish the footwork would have maybe made that the priority. Again, without being in the room, don't know exactly what they're thinking. But you can see that double move up top. It's there, right? He's right on the Patriots' face. Throw that thing down here at the opposite 40 and let it go. That's a hard throw to anticipate. You really got to see him come out of it and then throw it. But by that time, he's already got somebody at his feet. So if he took five instead of three, I think you get a little bit more depth. But man, if you don't take an L at left guard center on the double team, it's got a shot to be a massive play. One more time. And I get it. Super nitpicky. And this is why you watch film, to see where these opportunities come up. Again, this is a little bit, of, to me, of a bit of a wonky coverage. This looks like a type of man coverage with that lurk, whatever you want to say, you know, however you want to describe it. I'm not going to pretend to put the time study to know what the Browns are doing every single snap. But it looks like he's coming down. It looks like we get man everywhere else. And then normally I would say that this player is getting to the middle of the field. But it almost looks like he's staying in like a half field. Or maybe it's trying to double over the top. Either way, a bit of a unique spacing issue here. But I still think, gosh, you'd love to be able to get that shot. Especially on a third and long like this. A few opportunities like that where you see them kind of disconnected as far as what I would consider the timing of the footwork because he's at the back of his drop right there and that post is nowhere ready to be thrown. You can see it's a long developing play, no doubt about it. But the chips give him a time and then you would hope that that double team on a cross face nose would be able to hold up a little bit better than that. You can watch that pass protection, 85-25 chip. Shoot, the tight end stays in the whole time. And that nose is really the issue. Oh, that's just a bummer because it's there. I mean, those are frustrating because you dial him up, you got it. Looks like he's trying to wait for him. Got all that space, but he's got to take off. You can see his eyes have to go down. 
So maybe if he takes a five-step drop, but that's a big maybe. Still think there are even more plays in the vertical game for him as he gets more and more comfortable with the anticipation, timing, all those things come together. Right here, this is a beautiful throw. Little two-post double clear out with a little corner down here to the number three. Love how they use motion here. You can see how it's going to really distort the underneath coverage with four and 51 defensively. So we bring the tight end in motion. So we go from two by two to three by one. A 44 is blitzing. So he's coming off the edge. So they're in some variation of man coverage. Well, when they do this, so let's pretend 44 is not there. These two have these two. So when he comes inside of him, you can see them now. Now he's trying to pass this thing off. He goes, all right, 51, you've got the vertical at number three. So you got to run with this guy. And I'll take the back. But we're running a corner here. So he comes in. And if you're running a corner off this leverage, <laughs> yes, please. And it's a beautiful throw, no doubt about it. But it's a great manipulation of the defense through the formation. So again, what that motion does with 4 and 51. Watch them. They're communicating. Some sort of banjo call. Inside, you got him. Look at him. Point at each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. You got it. I got it. What? Who? Yep. Good luck. And that's a dime now. No doubt about it. And I know my man Desmond knows I love the dovetail. Now, he sort of dovetails. Dovetail, not as lined up as he normally is. He eventually gets there. To me, a little bit of a waste of movement at the top. Again, being super picky. Don't freak out. He gets there, and that's an absolute seed. That's a straight-up beautiful throw. But for me, as much as anything, it's the manipulation of the underneath coverage. Get the leverage we want. Obviously, helps to have tight ends who can do that. And that's an absolute dime. So, from the press box here. The motion, the post, double post clear out. Got him. I mean, that's a beautiful throw. My goodness. Love to see the touch accuracy down the field. Coupled with the play design, coupled with their ability to run the rock, play action, screen. Whew. Pat's got it rolling again. My goodness. Last one here, third and three. Touchdown. Get to empty again. This time Hunter Henry on the crazy seven move, little seam slant. Mac Jones wise though, this is Again, great offensive architecture, but quarterback execution-wise, watch his eyes. He's looking to the left. He's super decisive, back foot in the ground. He knows exactly what he's doing, coming back to Henry. Check that move out. I'm, I'm nervous to even count. Let's see if we can count. One, two, three, four, five. Somebody's been watching Hunter Renfro. My goodness. Timing-wise for Mac Jones. One, two, three, foot in the ground, back. I mean... Almost like robot-like. Left. Boom. I mean, so decisive. Just absolutely crushes the soul of 56. Look at 56. <laughs> Got no chance. Look off. Foot in the ground. Boom. I mean, that's our rolling, y'all. I know people don't want to hear it. But, whoo, my goodness. Mac Jones playing at a really high level. Josh McDaniels scheming it up finding ways to get them completions, move the rock, and running the ball, and able to convert like this in the red area. Just love what they're doing here. Just absolute epitome of Mac Jones. Decisive, accurate, rolling. So that is a wrap. Mac Jones playing at a really high level. Fun to see the Patriots kind of come together and become this kind of new, old Patriots version. Fun to break it down. If you are wondering... The high school that I coach at, we are also the Patriots, so I figured leave the practice attire on for today. As always, I appreciate the support. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.